In this session, you will learn how you can maximize your ROI, return of investment of your Amazon PPC advertising campaigns by using certain loopholes and workarounds that will help you to get cheap PPC traffic. Our guest in here in this session will be Chris Rawlings from Sophie Society. Uh, their agency help Amazon sellers with advertising and a few other things. Um, before I will introduce our guest, I wanted to mention that this uh, video is sponsored by a few companies. The first one is uh, Getida, they are Amazon FBA audit and reimbursement service. They help uh, to claim money back from Amazon, which owes Amazon owes you some money so they can help you to get this money back. Then the next company which is sponsoring this session is Perpetua, they are an e-commerce advertising optimization and intelligence platform and software for Amazon, Walmart and a few other marketplace sellers. So check them out. Uh, the links of all the sponsors you will find below in the description. The next company is Helium 10. They are all in one suite for Amazon and Walmart sellers. So if you need uh, some tools to find, you know, products or improve your listings, uh, check them out. Uh, again, the link below. And the uh, next company is Z. They are service for compliance, customs, and logistics. So they are basically one-stop shop for your global expansion of your e-commerce business. So check them out. And finally, last but not least, Unibrands is also sponsoring the session. They are Amazon FBA Acquire. They are interested in Amazon and Shopify direct-to-consumer brands. So if you want to exit your e-commerce business, talk to them. And the links to all the sponsors you will find below in the description. If you like what we do and uh, you will hear some tips in this session, don't forget to hit like whenever you hear a good tip, you hit like. Of course, you can do just one time, but also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. So you get notifications of the upcoming video content we are publishing. And now I wanted to mention that this session I'm hosting together with Lisa Lise. She works with uh, different Amazon brands and hosts Orange Click videos. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Agusas, and hi to everybody else as well. Very excited to have you back with us here for another awesome session. And today our guest will be Chris. So hi, Chris. And before uh, we go to your presentation, could you please first introduce yourself and tell us what you do in the Amazon space? Sure. Yeah. What's up, guys? Good to hang with you again. Um, and what's up, everybody who's tuning in live or seeing the recording? And uh, yeah, so my name is Chris Rawlings. I'm the long haired guy in the Amazon game, as you can see, uh, as people have started to recognize me. We, 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 can, we, can, we can compare our hair. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. We're both long haired peeps in the Amazon game. Um, yeah, I started my first seven figure brand in 2015 and uh yeah since then um have had minority and majority stakes in a number of different brands i coach seven and eight figure brands in the titan network mastermind uh, i run sophie society which has driven more traffic and more optimization to thousands of brands um we're the back end uh content for masterminds you know of like amazing selling machine type network probably the masters um we do all the content for them and we we manage ppc uh using a truth focused approach and some interesting strategies that some of which i'm going to be going through during this presentation today sounds really awesome so i think we are ready to see uh what kind of strategies to teach to our viewers to get some cheap traffic to their amazon listings so uh go ahead share your screen and let's dive uh, right into your presentation all right let's rock and roll this is uh this is gonna be um pretty game changing for those of you guys that actually implement this what we're going to be going through is the top level things that you can do to make your traffic from Amazon PPC work better for you and to get cheaper traffic from Amazon PPC. Um, and uh, some of these things are gonna be surprising to you guys. Some of them um, you're going to maybe know but not have actually implemented. Um, and then others maybe you've already tried but it was a while ago and things have changed. So uh, yeah, 
Um, we're going to go through five major ones and break down each one a little bit. But uh, basically, you guys all took my clickbait. <laughs> so got you there. Um, you know, I want to think of a catchy title for this, you know, the loopholes that can get you cheaper traffic. Um, but don't go yet. It's not just clickbait. Um, we are actually going to be going through some like tricky hacks to like and workarounds that actually get you cheaper traffic or at least keep you, save you from getting expensive traffic. Um, but we're also going to go over fundamentals as well. So uh, had to attract you with the click, but the fundamentals you guys know already um, always produce the best results. So we're going to go over the fun, you know, quick hacks you guys can implement like now, even while you're watching this or right after you watch this. And we're also going to go over the, like the ground laying stuff that allows you to succeed in the long term as well. Okay. So hopefully that sounds good to everybody. I can guarantee that whether you're just starting out or you're already running a seven or eight figure business, that if you implement all of these things, I promise you, you will see cheaper traffic coming from Amazon and you will make your traffic work for you more, meaning turn more of those traffic, more of that traffic into conversions. So I promise you this. If you actually follow all of the strategies that I'm going to uh, to put in place in this presentation, and a lot of them are immediately actionable, um, some of them only come into play once you have certain trigger events like a new product launch, you know, or you enter a new phase for an existing product, but some of them you can implement like immediately. And even if you guys just implement one or two of them, you are going to change your economics. So just paying attention for the rest of this presentation, the next you know, 35, 45 minutes is going to give you a direct ROI, okay? That's, that's my promise to you if you actually act on it and you actually implement, all right? So yes, there's a clickbait element to it because I am gonna go over fundamentals, but this is my promise to you guys, all right? So a quick review of the five. One, don't pay Amazon for shitty keyword research, okay? This means like keyword research that is bad quality, expensive, and takes a long time, okay? There's a better way to do it. And I'm gonna show you what the old way is or the classic wisdom, and I'm gonna show you what the better way to do is. Two, what I like to call yard sailing products on your own front lawn to increase order value from the traffic that you do send. Okay, another way for you to get cheaper traffic overall because you're getting more a greater order order value for all the traffic that you get. Now I'm actually going to break that down into a number of different ways to increase the order value. Three, use the PPC data that you get back outside of the PPC ecosystem to increase traffic relevance. So to make the traffic more relevant, hence more likely to convert. Um, this is a really huge one that most people don't do. We're going to dive into that. Four, put the traffic to good use by increasing both specific and general conversion. And there's a difference between the two. We're going to walk, walk through that when we get to that part. And then finally, utilize the free Amazon advertising channels to get actual $0 traffic. Um, and yeah, I'm serious. You can advertise on Amazon for free. There's a number of different ways to do it. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. All right, let's start off with number one. Don't pay Amazon for keyword research that takes too long, is not good quality, and is way too expensive. For this, a lot of you guys know this. Some of you guys that are in your earlier stages maybe don't, don't know this yet, uh, and you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants. But this is the sort of classic setup for optimizing Amazon PPC for a given product over time. You have your discovery campaign that's constantly finding new keywords. Then you have your research campaign that's actually distilling those keywords uh, into like broad and phrase match to find specific search terms. And those search terms go into performance campaigns that ideally they have a very low average cost of sale, very low A cost, and they're profiting you the most possible uh, amount. Now, the place to get leverage here to get cheaper Amazon traffic and the loophole you can use is to basically skip the discovery phase, at least in the beginning of a product launch. 
And I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. Um, but this is how the typical feedback loop works. Discovery is an auto-targeting campaign that identifies high potential keywords. Um, then those go into research as broad match and phrase match campaigns, where then you find the actual specific search terms that you put into the performance campaign. Once you put them in the performance campaign, you negative exact match them back in the discovery campaign so that you're not doubling up and you can actually accurately measure how well those performance campaigns are doing. This is the kind of like core that most sellers use as the, uh, the core engine that drives their PPC. And it does work because you continuously find new keywords as the market changes and the market evolves um, or your product changes. Um, just in general, like the number of search terms, number of searches for each term is going up and down constantly on a month by month basis. So running this continuous loop allows you to always stay ahead of the game, always know what's converting best and consistently divert your Amazon ad spend to those keywords that are converting best. And you never get stale or old because you always have these discovery campaigns that are looking for new keywords. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I, uh, you should be doing this, uh, but this is only a part of the story and it's actually becoming a smaller and smaller part of the story as Amazon PPC becomes more and more a tool for ranking and less and less a tool for profit. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more what I mean by that later on in the presentation. But essentially what I'm telling you guys to do to not dump money down the toilet paying Amazon to do keyword research is in a product launch. So during the product launch, don't start with an auto campaign. This is what can cost you thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in wasted ad spend because you didn't do your homework up front. Instead of starting with an auto campaign to let Amazon do your research for you, wait 14 to 30 days to do the auto campaign. And instead of doing an auto campaign, you're going to do deep keyword research yourself in order to identify the keywords that are highest relevance based on your own research. With this takes more time, but it costs way, way, way less. And you get the data for way cheaper because you give Amazon something to start with. If you think about it, what happens when you start this cycle, right from the very beginning is Amazon actually has no sales data to go off of. So in these discovery campaigns, it's trying all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, if you open these discovery campaigns, if, and especially if you create it in the beginning of a product launch cycle, you're going to see some crazy terms, stuff that's like not at all relevant. And Amazon is driving traffic to it and it's getting clicks and not conversions because Amazon doesn't yet know that it's not a good keyword. You do know, or you can know, if you do your keyword research up front. Okay, the way you do that is before you start a product launch, you generate a keyword list ahead of time through extensive keyword research. You, you, I mean, right now what I have on the screen here is a screenshot of Cerebro. Inside the Titan network, we use a tool called Mufasa um, in Titan Tools. You can use AMZ Scout. There are tons of, uh, keyword research tools, uh, Helium 10 being the most popular one. Pick one, go with it. You can do a reverse ASIN search and do your own keyword search based on the primary keywords you know you should be ranking for. And then the idea is sort your keywords based on first search volume and second of all, buyer intent. So you're going to find all of the search terms, the main search terms and the long tail search terms that have the highest possible volume while also having the highest relevance to your specific product. So if I'm selling omega-3 chewable supplement for dogs, I'm not going to go after omega-3. That's the highest volume keyword, but it's not going to be the highest relevance. I'm going to go after omega-3 for pets or omega-3 for dogs or chewable omega-3 for dogs. I'm going to choose the ones that have the highest possible uh, impressions share while also having the highest relevance. Pick five to go after that you're going to create dedicated campaigns for because you're already, you already know you're going to rank for those. And then choose 60 to 20 long tail keywords and put that in your research, cam research campaigns up front. So you're not doing any discovery campaigns at all in the beginning. There's a totally different way to go about it. And you wait until you get the data back from the, the broad and phrase match 
campaigns that you put in research. And then once Amazon has enough sales data from those that you put in that you already know are high relevance and you give it a little flexibility because they're broad match and phrase match for Amazon to try different combinations. Um, so you're going to start right off the bat with a launch that isn't exploding your budget for super high a cost, super high tacos. That's true average cost of sale or total average cost of sale. Um, you're going to keep it moderate even in the beginning phases. So this, I put this as number one because this is the biggest thing you can do during product launches, not dumping money down the toilet, letting Amazon do really bad product research uh, and keyword research for you. Okay. Um, then you're going to do one keyword per campaign for the primary keywords you want to rank for. And you can group the long tail keywords into campaigns by search volume and by buyer intent, meaning like different category. Like somebody might be searching for a problem while another person is searching for a product. You know, those you would group, group separately. Um, and this isn't a masterclass on campaign structure. That's a whole presentation in and of itself. Um, and SellerFest has a number of excellent PPC presentations that you guys can check out if you want to go deeper into campaign structure setup. Um, or if you want at the end, I'm going to share my email. You know, we could take a look at your campaign structure and let you know how you're doing. But, uh, but yeah, so this is the number one thing you guys can do. And this is a hack that will save you thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or even more, depending on how high volume you're going for, for your products. Okay. This is a, this is an initial launch that we're running. You're looking at a week's worth of data here and you could see the A cost on these is low. I just pulled this. This is a recent from, from a recent week. The A cost is fairly low, even though we're trying to rank. Um, and you could see this is because we didn't dump a bunch of money down the toilet by starting with auto campaigns. Um, so, you know, even in the initial stages, you can have like an affordable A cost. It's not always this way. Sometimes your A cost is going to be a hundred percent, you know, um, because you're just really driving really hard to try to launch, but, uh, it doesn't have to be. Okay. That's the point. And we have tons of cases like this. I mean, we do launches every single week, product launch, PPC product launches every single week. So you can, uh, trust that you're talking to an authority that knows what they're talking about. All right. Number two. Now that we're getting traffic that's not dumping money down the toilet for, our, for just paying for bad keyword research, let's put that traffic to the best use. You should view your listing as like a home plot, like real estate. The, re the rest of your listing besides the main image, the title and the bullet points, I consider the front lawn of the listing. Now, Unfortunately, since we live in the HOA, the Homeowners Association, for those of you that know what that means, of Amazon, there are certain rules we have to abide by, one of them being that it actually advertises a bunch of other products on our listing. Only about 60% of your listing is actually your own products, which is crazy. The rest of that 40% is other people's products and other promotions that Amazon is trying to push. Now, you could push that. You could push that to 75, 85% if you know how to fully utilize your own front lawn on Amazon. And this allows you to increase your average order value, allowing you to effectively get cheaper traffic. Even though you're paying the same amount per click, you're getting a higher amount of dollars per purchase or per conversion, meaning that overall that traffic ends up being cheaper for you. And this is one of the things that we always try to set up in the beginning of a product launch or even during an optimization campaign over time, if it's in the product expansion phase or even the harvesting phase, that's, that's long-term pulling money out. We always look at the front lawn of the listing. And uh, let me give you guys some examples of things that you can do. These are some of the ones that you can like immediately implement. Um, so I'm hoping you guys take action on this and you're taking notes and you're not, you don't have multiple Chrome tabs open or have your phone open next to you because I'm going to rail through these pretty quickly. Okay. So pay attention. Starting with the first one is I won't get one. <clears throat> if you add a special offer or product promotion into the listing, you can actually add a whole list of them, which takes up space. You are cross selling your own products on your own listing. And that's that much more space. That's not being used to cross sell some other brands products on your listing. Another element that 
benefits you from this is that if you do this well enough and you get enough orders from this because you have a good enough deal in there, it will allow you to capture the frequently bought together space as well, which is the next point. Um, I'm going to use this example, this uh, vitamin C serum example, because they really nailed it here. Um, they did a good job getting as much real estate as possible. It was a maximum possible amount of this listing was actually selling this product or their other products. Um, I would say it's less than half, even far less than half of listings uh, that from brands that come to us for content or for PPC management um, that end up getting the frequently bought together, have the frequently bought together. It's not that hard, guys. The way you get frequently bought together is by people putting these products in their cart and then buying them at the same time. So whatever you can do to incentivize that will give you a better chance of getting this frequently bought together space. So the buy one, get one space under the special discounts and offers section of your listing is one great way to do this because they can simply just add these other products to their cart and then buy them together. And it gives you a better opportunity to get this frequently bought together spot. You can also do external promotions from your own list or for many chat campaigns. Um, you, there are all sorts of ways that you can get this frequently bought together. As long as all you need to do is get shoppers to put them in their cart at the same time and buy them at the same time. Okay. So tons of ways to do this. It gives you a big chunk of real estate. You can see that takes up a big part of the screen there. Virtual bundle. Okay. Some of you guys know the benefits of bundles basically gets you a new ASIN without you having to do any product development for products that again are frequently bought together or should be bought together. What a lot of people don't know about virtual bundles is recently Amazon began showing the bundle as a separate section on each of the ASINs included in the bundle. So it's another cross-sell opportunity. It's basically getting free ad space. Like instead of paying for a product placement ad, you get this for free just by having the bundle. So not only does it highlight the product yet again, but it also highlights the bundle itself. And it's going to show these on each of the products that are in part of the bundle on their separate listings. Really powerful way. You can see, again, this takes up a huge part of the screen. And the more of our listing we can take up, the less total percentage of the listing is being taken up by a competing brand. And a lot of you guys have seen some of my other presentations where I actually show on a phone how people think, how sellers think shoppers shop on Amazon and how they actually shop on Amazon. How they think is, oh, a shopper is, you know, in order chronologically scrolling down my listing and reading all of it, you know, from top to bottom. No, that's not how it works. A shopper gets onto the listing they see a couple of the words, four or five of the words in the bullet points and in the title, and they look at the primary image and then they scroll down first. So people are not used to scrolling over, they scroll down and up. So they scroll down and normally what they'll do is scroll all the way down to the reviews. And then if they don't see bad reviews that, that cause them to click back off the listing, they're gonna scroll back up from the bottom. And it's kind of the schizophrenic, like, frantic scrolling action that goes up and down and pauses and stops and then goes fast up and fast down. So it's basically a probabilities game. You, the more of the listing you take up, the more likely you are for a shopper to randomly during their schizophrenic scrolling up and down, stop on either your product that the listing is selling or some of your other products. So it's a probabilities game, just like a casino. You know, the more of the listing, the greater percentage of the listing you have, the higher the probability that somebody's eyeballs are on your product or your other products. So that's the fundamental understanding and the fundamental way to think about this is you're never going to get 100% of the listing because compared to similar items, sponsored products related to this item, the DSP ads that Amazon adds in, um, there are a lot of sections of the listing where Amazon is still going to be able to squeeze in other people's products. But the game is to get a greatest possible percentage of your listing selling your own products. Product placement ads on your own products. Okay. These guys also do this pretty well. They have some competitors on here, but they also have their own products on here. So this is a double whammy 
because the other ones that we that we went over the virtual bundle the 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 and the buy one get one not frequently bought together but buy one get one and virtual bundle those you either have or no one has them um but for the product placement ads if you don't have them your competitors have them so it's actually you're doing a double whammy with this because not only are you able to promote your products, but you're also keeping Amazon from promoting other brands products. So it's a two for one, you know, you, you reduce the damage caused by Amazon and other brands by advertising on your listing and you increase opportunity of being able to cross sell your other products. So people balk at this sometimes when Amazon sellers are really cheap and they're like, well, I'm not going to pay for a spot on my own listing. Well, that's the one spot that you should always have. Every brand should be advertising their own products on all of their other products. Ideally, the most relevant ones. But if you don't have that many products, then you should just simply advertise them all on the other on each of the product pages. Because if you're not, then somebody else is. That's the thing. So just the value of bumping them off is worth it, let alone the value of cross-selling your other products. That is a really powerful one. All right, last easy one to implement. For those of you guys that haven't implemented this, if you're listening and you don't know what the product carousel is or you know what it is, but you haven't done it yet, this is a really easy way for you to immediately get benefit from this presentation and immediately get a direct ROI from this presentation. You can literally do this like right after the presentation in live time, as long as you have multiple products. This section, can take up the entire screen if it's long enough and the comparison table is long enough. That is a gigantic amount of real estate, the entire screen, I mean, on a desktop. Um, on a mobile, it can take up about a third to a half of the screen, depending on how long the, the comparison table is. But that's huge. I mean, you can see how big this is. Look, it's even on the screen that I'm on, and I'm not even showing the entire uh, product carousel, this is taking up about four fifths of the total desktop available area. So what is the product carousel? The product carousel is a module available to you in the A plus content builder, the EBC or A plus content builder. So what it does is it allows you to sell your other products in your EBC with mini listings essentially. So these are all clickable. You click them and it brings them to this other listing. And in this comparison table that you see down here, the idea is to compare certain features of the product, like for instance, size. One is one ounce, one is three ounce, one is five ounce. But you can hack this. You actually don't have to use the comparison table to compare uh, quant quantitative functionality like number of units or size or purpose. You can actually hijack this comparison table to write sales copy. So if you can get really creative with this, you could say like the problem it solves. And then in the problem it solves, you're basically tell them all the benefits, reduces acne, reduces aging, you know, is great for women above 30, um, whatever it is that you want to sell, that's your unique selling proposition and speaking to your ideal customer avatar. So you're basically creating miniature listings of all your other products on here. So even if you guys are out there listening to this, and you already have the product carousel implemented, this should be the last bot module in your A-plus content. We do this for every single brand that we create A-plus content for, whether it's our brand or someone else's brand. And if you're not using these as mini listings and you only have quantity or volume or something like that, you're missing an opportunity to, to sell your other products with actual, actual sales copy. Um, so this is super powerful. This is one of the most powerful ones in the list. So yeah, these are, these are the top five ways that you can regain your front lawn of your listings so that all the traffic you send to your listings has higher order value and less of it goes to selling other people's products. I guarantee that there's probably none of you that actually are fully utilizing all five of these. Um, and if there are any of you, it's probably a very small minority because we see, like I said, we've seen thousands of brands and it's about a hundred brands a month come through our doors plus, and it's a vast majority of the brands are not fully utilizing all of these functions. And when you do, that's when you get these results that I was talking about where you can launch a product and you can keep the A cost low, you can keep the tacos low, 
you can get to profitability or at least break even during your launch quicker, much quicker, if you actually utilize all of these little hacks I'm telling you about. Okay, now we're getting into the fundamental stuff that may be less sexy, but this is possibly the highest impact that you can have uh, because this set gets at the feedback loop between PPC and the rest of your business that you can run if you see PPC as part of the whole machine instead of seeing it as its own separate part of the business with its own separate metrics. That's an unhealthy way to view it. Um, I would say most of the brands that come in to ask us to do their PPC management for them are viewing PPC as this separate thing and they're just hyper-focused on lowering a costs as much as possible and that's basically it. And they're not seeing how it's affecting the rest of their brand and the rest of their business um, and how it's affecting their listing. So you can see when you do this right, guys, first, let me tell you exactly what you should be doing. Okay, so what is this picture that I'm showing here? All of the data coming from your sponsored ads, your sponsored search ads, your sponsored brand ads, even your sponsored video ads should be fed back into the listings themselves and also all of your external promotions and the results of the conversion of your listing itself and the, and the content that you choose for your listing itself should inform the keywords that you start with in your PPC. So what does that look like in practice? So say I'm running Amazon PPC and I see that unbeknownst to me, I thought I was selling a unisex product, but most of the sales, say four fifths of the sales, 80% of the sales, they're either being purchased by men or they're being purchased for men by their girlfriends or their moms. Well, that says to me that it, that's an opportunity for me to hyper focus on an avatar that I wasn't focusing on before because I was trying to get as much of the pie as possible by trying to go unisex, right? But if I'm trying to get as much of the pie as possible, then my conversion rate is going to be low because I am trying to appeal to the most people instead of the most high relevance people. So you might get less keywords that you're actually ranking for, that you're converting for when you go super high relevance and, and focus on a, a, a customer avatar, but your conversions are gonna go high and the ranking you get for those keywords is gonna be sticky. So if you guys are in a position where you're getting low conversions, you rank and then you drop that down ranking every time you, you get ranked and you just can't keep the rank without paying ridiculous amounts for PPC, it's because you haven't run this feedback loop. So <clears throat> the way to do this in practice, <clears throat> sorry guys, got a little cough, is you see the, the keywords that get the highest amount of impressions while also being the highest converting. So Start by looking at the highest converting, but the ones that you know aren't making significant amounts of sales, those aren't worth looking at. They're not worth changing your listing for, for sure. But if they contribute to your total amount of sales in a meaningful way, meaning they take into account most of your sales or a large portion of your sales, and they're getting a really high PPC conversion, you should change your listing to respond to those. You know, So what a normal person would do is they would see that that was a high converting listing that's producing a good amount of sales. They would move that keyword to the research campaign or further down into the, the performance campaign and they'd continue to optimize it and that's how they would respond to that data. But what I'm saying is that is a small world perspective, a small, small world view. You need to not just take act on that data inside your little world of PPC, you have to act on that data inside the whole business. The primary way being by editing your listing. So in this scenario that I'm putting forth right now, I would likely change the primary image to show somehow that it was for a man. If it was a shirt for a man, I might show a guy wearing it. And ideally the guy that's the, the median age of the guys that buy the product. Um, and I might also add to the title, uh, guys shirts, um, guys low, low cut V-neck, um, hemless shirts or whatever it is, um, because I'm focusing now on this avatar. And this is just one example. It doesn't have to be an avatar. It could be a use case. Um, I remember Brad from, uh, from Helium 10 used to love to say, uh, that 
he found collagen in my coffee being one of the top search keywords. So immediately saying that in the listing and having the images show people putting this collagen into their coffee will increase your conversion for these folks. And if it's a high enough amount of sales, it's going to increase the general conversion of the listing overall. So what this does when you implement this is it turns your PPC into a tool for creating higher relevance listings all the time. As long as you have this feedback loop going and you have regular reviews, monthly, quarterly reviews, where you say, okay, here's our search term report. What are the top ways that we can change our listing to better convert for the search terms that are doing the best in Amazon PBC? And then you can see how this is a reinforcing feedback loop. You change the listing so the good converting keywords convert even better. And then you put them into performance campaigns and dial in the bids and dial in your top of search bid adjustment and everything else that you, you are already doing in PBC to make it convert even better. And then your ranking campaigns for that keyword stick even more. And then you just, you end up like shooting yourself into this niche that allows you to just completely own it because no one else can even touch you. Um, and if you run this well, again, this is something that most brands still don't do. Soon on Amazon, this is going to be completely normal. It's going to be par for the course. Every single brand will do this. But right now, they're still not doing it. These are the two numbers you want to look at. For the most part, sessions and click-through rate. Um, and then also, you're going to look at the actual conversion, the, C, the, the conversion rate of the, uh, the PPC conversion rate of the keyword. <clears throat> so it's really those three. But the sessions and the conversion rate tell you at least for the click and things that affect the primary image and the uh, title, okay? That's a huge one. I know that one's not quite as sexy as some of the other little hacks that I showed you guys that you can implement right away, but that's what will take you from a $1 million business to a $10 million business. That's the kind of fundamental processes that professional brands put in place that actually create eight-figure brands. All right, the fourth one is we just went into how to change the specific conversion um, by finding out the highest relevance keywords that are converting the highest and then actually tailoring the listing for those high that high relevance traffic. But there's also ways to increase the conversion of your listing generally, even for that other traffic. So you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. I want you guys to think of your listing as a race car. So a race car can go faster in one of two ways. It can either dump nitrous into the the engine every single time it fuels up and it can just keep refilling that nitrous tank every single time it goes on a race or it can upgrade the engine once and forever be a faster race car. How does that relate to your listings? Well, the nitrous is like adding more PPC traffic. You can get more sales just by upping your PPC spend and by being better at driving PPC traffic. But you're gonna get more sales permanently without having to spend every single day for those sales by increasing the listing conversion once. So in, in, uh, paying attention to your listing conversion is like upgrading the engine in your race car. PPC traffic and optimizing PPC is like nitrous. Every single time you wanna race, you gotta fuel it back up. You gotta pay for that fuel, dump that fuel into the tank. Whereas the listing conversion, it's something that you change once and it it makes you faster forever. So it's weird. People don't pay enough attention to their listing conversion. They'll like create a listing, never look at it again. Most of the eight figure sellers that we work with, they do either quarterly or at least yearly reviews of their listings where they actually change and update the content of their listings to stay up to date and stay in line, stay, stay ahead of the game, stay ahead of the curve and ahead of their competitors. Okay. So what are the top ways to do this? Again, this is a whole presentation in and of itself. I've actually done sessions with Augustus on this. So you could search YouTube for this and you'll, you'll find some stuff. Uh, these images are, this is actually a listing that we did for Matt Clark from, from ASM for their coffee brand. He's public about this. This is not a secret. Has a coffee brand, Life Boost, Boost Coffee. Um, suing high eight figures, if not nine figures now. The brand is absolutely crushing it. Um, but the thing to do with this brand, with uh, increasing general conversion, 
is focus on the highest leverage things. So I tried to structure this presentation so that you guys could take as much immediate action as you possibly could uh, during and after the presentation. So here, here are the top level things. Again, look up an entire presentation on this. I've done tons of content on this, both private and public content. And I have some guides even that I could share with you guys if you wanna look deeper into this. But the first thing is focus on visuals. They contribute to your conversion much more than the text does. Much, much, much more than the text does. The top things you wanna focus on are the primary image to win the click and the EBC and secondary images to win the conversion. Everything that you say in your text, in your title, in your bullet points, in your description should be communicated via a visual somehow. If you're not communicating it via visual, you're not being creative enough and you are leaving conversion on the table big time, okay? The next little hack, little trick that some of you, a lot of you guys I know are not doing is add human faces. You see, we did this here of the ideal customer avatar. It's like, you know, young families or millennials that would buy this product that are more health conscious. Um, so you want to add ideal human faces and they should be of your ideal customer avatar. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of different types of people that purchase the product. You pick the most common one, uh, the one that produces the most order values, and you add those faces. This doesn't have to be a brand new photo shoot you, you have to do. You can just go to um, a stock photo site and download stock photo. And if you're good at photoshopping or you have um, a team like Sophie or if you have your own designer or whatever, um, you, you won't even be able to tell it's Photoshop you can elegantly put products into stock imagery in a way that no one knows that it's photoshopped okay but if you don't have human faces on there this is a big one there was a study done um that actually a b tested two websites one with human faces and one without human faces it was they were the same in every way except one had human faces and they weren't even the founders faces it was like random faces random human faces and the one with the human faces had dramatically higher conversion than the one without human faces because human faces subconsciously inspire trust, especially if they are content or happy or smiling. Uh, it inspires trust. So if you're missing this, you're missing out on a lot of conversion. I absolutely 100% guarantee you that you're missing out on this conversion. Um, next is a lot of people miss this one, design for mobile first, mobile first. About three quarters of the traffic um, of shopping on Amazon happens on mobile. That's interesting. It's actually half is actually checked out on desktop. I think it's still a little more than half is they actually do their checkout on desktop. And uh, that's, that's an interesting phenomenon. I'm not sure why that is. I'm guessing that it relates to the older population shopping on Amazon that uh, just doesn't know how to check out on their phone or doesn't trust their phone. But even though most uh, there's still half of people are checking out of their cart, the shopping, a majority of the shopping is being done on the phone. And it's actually like a vast majority. Like it's, I believe it's over three quarters now. Uh, so mobile first, not mobile second. You don't design it and then check what it would look like on mobile. You design it for mobile and then check what it would look like on desktop. Okay, this is a whole thought swap that you guys have to do. It's a complete 180. Communicate every benefit and USP using an image or an icon. I already went over this. And make sure to tell at least one story. A plus content is a great place for this. Now, the story is another way to psychologically hack into the trust mechanism of a shopper. Human beings have stole, told stories for thousands upon thousands of years, and we are wired to understand information through stories. So tell a story. A lot of people say, well, I don't have a story about my the founding of my brand. There's nothing cool about my story. Actually, there is. You just haven't thought creatively enough about it. Your story could be about how the brand was founded, how the product idea was created. It could be what this brand means to you or your family. Uh, it could be a story about your family or about your own you know, personal challenges you had to overcome to even start a brand. It can be about a customer and how a customer used your product to solve a really big issue. There are tons of ways to spin this. It could be around some kind of charity or some kind of cause that you have attached your brand to. So if you think you don't have a story, you actually do. And the place to do it is either in a full dedicated module of A plus content or one section of a module in a four panel module 
or if you have access to it in the brand story section that shows up above the EBC, okay? So these are really powerful. And then coming to the last way to, that's a loophole to get cheaper Amazon traffic. And this is to use the free advertising, Amazon advertising channels. And there's three of them, three free Amazon advertising channels. Go to Amazon's advertising website. It will show them to you, but I'm going to go through them with you right now. The first one we'll focus on is posts. Now I can even see, even though I can't see your guys' faces, but there are some of you out there that are rolling your eyes right now thinking, yeah, I tried posts, didn't work, I didn't get results from it. Well, if you tried it more than a couple months ago, I would suggest that you try it again because posts is actually gaining a lot of momentum on Amazon and they're showing it more and more places and pushing it more and more. So as soon as you even click on a single post, Amazon shows your related posts. They show up on the storefront. They show up on your listing. They show up on other people's listings. They show up in a dedicated session on, section on the app. So Amazon is trying to get engaging content that people are interested in that keep them on the app longer because the longer they're on the app, the more they're going to shop. So it's actually pushing these hard. And you can get serious traffic from posts now, and they're 100% free. Uh, who knows how long they'll be free, but they're free now. Um, the key to posts, and actually in the bonus, I go through a lot of tips and tricks on all of these free sections. It's a whole presentation all about the free Amazon advertising channels. But just to give you guys the high level, uh, the way to do it is to come up with 60 to 90 posts up front. All the images have to be different. Otherwise, Amazon will reject them and all the captions have to be different. So you just come up with all of them. Um, you can use the scrap images that you didn't use for your listing, or you can use images that are stock that Photoshop products in. Um, they have to be different, but they don't have to be very different. You can even like change the positioning of something or change the color of this or that. Um, and you can still use those, those images, even though they're not technically completely different images. Um, the way to do this is to post every day for at least two months. And that's when you start to see the traffic increase. Again, guys, this is free. So if you're trying to get more of Amazon's advertising traffic uh, cheaply, going free is certainly a good way. And it's not that hard to do. Amazon Live. This is the second free way to get traffic that's considered part of Amazon's advertising ecosystem. Again, this is one that I think a lot of people tried back in 2020, maybe didn't see a huge amount of results, but is gaining more and more traction. And you don't have to have a super well-produced video. It can be super raw. Um, you, you can just do it with your phone. Um, and it can be anything. It can be someone just like walking through how to use the product, walking through stories of how the product was used, walking through a step-by-step -step guide, doing a breakout. Um, there are tons of ways to do it. Little, little testimonials. Um, and it's a good way to get followers to the brand. So far, I haven't seen brands doing that good utilizing followers. Um, you utilize followers by sending campaigns to them. Uh, but so far, they, they don't seem to be showing it in a good way. Uh, so I think the followers are not yet super useful, but they may be in the future. So it's still worthwhile. Um, obviously, the longer you stream, the longer, the more traffic you get and the replay is available. Uh, this can get sessions directly to your product listing. You got to make sure to have some kind of deal. And then also you can show different products. You can even show competitors products and these can end up showing uh, using competitors real estate, which is pretty cool. The posts are the same way. It gets you real estate on competitors listings and your own listings. All right, the third and final way to get free traffic is storefronts. So this is the one and only place on Amazon where there's no distractions away from your products. This is the only place on Amazon that you could send traffic to where it's all your products. Because think about it, even if you send traffic to your own listings, it's not all your products. You know, you send traffic to um, search results or a search results page, it's not all your products. You send traffic to your listing, not all your products. You send traffic to your storefront, it's all your products. Competitors can't advertise on your storefront, okay? So this is really powerful. And there are a lot of ways to drive traffic to storefronts from Google, from your many chat campaigns or from Facebook, from your own um, email lists. 
and it's focused because they're not distracted by seeing sponsored products related to this product or compared to similar products. It's only your products. And it's a one-stop shop for anything you want to shout out and promote about your specific brand and your products. Even if you only have one or a couple products, you can do a single page storefront. I actually have like a template for it. I'm going to put my email up at the end of this and I'll send it to you guys if you want it. Uh, just shoot me an email. But there's a, there's a, you could just do a single page storefront, even if you have only one product. It's worth it because, again, this is a very unique way for you to sell your products on Amazon. You have unique access to unique different types of content, like background videos that autoplay and loop, um, and just regular videos with sound and clickable lifestyle images that allow you to hover over lifestyle images and shop and even add to cart from lifestyle images. So if you're not utilizing this, again, it's 100% free. And if you follow, if, if you don't know where to start or it seems like too big of a challenge for you, you guys can simply just follow the, the formula that I have. Uh, it's easy as that. And um, it's like, I think 10 modules and you make a single page one, you don't have to worry about all these different pages um, and then build up from there. Also your posts all automatically show in your storefront. So that's another place that you get free traffic. Utilize all of them, guys. Um, I took a couple of screen grabs from some recent launches. You can see uh, this product that we launched on top here. It is a true A cost of 17% the first week, 11% the second week, an A cost of 18% in the first week and second week, doubled sales by the second week. So already like two weeks into this launch, it's already profitable because you got to hit it with a combo approach. This one on the bottom here, you can see that this is, this is one that's not in launch phase, it's in maintenance phase. And um, or more expansion phase, growing up about 10% month over month. You can see the true A cost here is about 2% pretty consistently, but sales are trending upwards. And we do a ton uh, like this. This is a recent launch that we did. The monthly search volume on this keyword that we ranked for was 23,000 per month, but the listing conversion is super high at uh, 44%, you can see there. And we ranked number four for this 23,000 search volume keyword within just a couple of weeks. Um, 10 weeks, 10 weeks here. Got to 20 sales a day um, and rising and our ranking page one for 67 of the keywords between main keywords and long tail keywords. And I mean, this is just from the past couple of weeks. We do this every week, like I was saying, guys, just like Mortal Kombat, it's all about the combos. If you put in place everything I said, you... I guarantee there's something that I went through in this presentation that you're not doing. If you put it all together, this is what the winning brands do. They handle it all. They make sure that every, every base is covered. They don't view PPC as this island silo. They view it as part of a larger picture and a larger business. Um, and soon this is going to be standard for all brands on Amazon. For now, it's still rare, which is, means that if you implement everything I said in this presentation, and there's a lot of things where I just I went over the surface. You can go deeper on those things. And I have other presentations on those. I'm happy to send them to you. Or you can just search um, Augustus's Orange Click channel to find the, the presentation that we've done on it um, and go deeper on those or have your team go deeper on those. And remember, PPC is more and more a tool for ranking um, and not just a source of product or a source of sales. So Tacos over ACOS every time. Tacos meaning true average cost of sale. How much am I spending on ads versus how many total sales am I getting for the product versus ACOS, which is how much am I spending on ads versus how many ad sales am I getting for the product? Tacos takes into account the ranking effect that you're getting from spending on PBC, which is why it's actually a more important metric than ACOS is. And uh, yeah, so remember, it's all about the combo approach, guys. That's it. Um, this is my email or the, the company email that we have. I, I, both myself and my team have um, visibility over this. And this is my Instagram. If you want to DM me, just take out your phone, open the camera, and you can just put this, this QR code in your camera, tap the link, and it will go to my page. I'm going to leave this on for a few more seconds so that you guys can do that now if you want to connect with me. And uh, yeah, uh, just remember, guys, action is key. Um, if you took a bunch of notes during this presentation or your mind was blown in this part or that part, but you don't act on it, it's not going to affect your business. Don't overthink it. Don't think, oh, how can I make this unique? How can I make this really me? 
just do it. You know, action is a, a, a infinity times better than inaction. Don't worry about, you know, the specific way that you implement it. Okay. Yes. Angelica is happy. Zahari says tacos all the way. All right. Uh, and now uh, we could talk about the VP package. Um, so during this seller fest online event, uh, we asked, um, every speaker to present, uh, to, to provide additional value. So we recorded with each of them a, a video, additional video, and uh, we did record additional VP video with uh, Chris. Can you give us a little bit, um, a glimpse what you shared there? Yes. Yeah, so you guys saw at the end of the presentation, the fifth tip was um, how to get free Amazon traffic through the three free Amazon advertising channels, storefronts, posts, and Amazon live video. In the VIP package presentation, I actually go deep into each one of those and I go through how to optimize and how to set up each one of them. I actually go through the formula for um, storefronts, for whether you have multiple products or one product, the formula for how to, to structure that and which modules to use. And I go through the posts, some tips and tricks. I go through some examples of some traffic that brands that I've coached or that I've worked with have gotten from it. Uh, and Amazon Live Video, again, I go through some examples, tips and tricks, what to set up, how to do it raw, how to do it low budget. Um, yeah. And so I just go deeper on all three of those. I, I got to cover them high level, you know, just one slide per channel during this presentation because of time restraints. but you know, in the VIP section, Augustus and I got to go super duper deep on it. So I think you guys will get a lot of value out of that for those of you that do do opt in. Yes, and besides Chris, you will get additional 20 videos where all these experts are sharing uh, different uh, uh, worksheets, uh, templates, SOPs, blueprints, checklists. So it's very, we ask them to deliver a very practical um presentations and uh, explanations so now i think it's time to go to the q a section and if yeah lisette you wanted to say something yeah i also wanted to thank chris for this awesome content and i saw people commenting asking where can they see more videos uh with you so we created a separate uh playlist as well so you can find the link uh in the chat and i also wanted to remind if you enjoyed this content then definitely hit like to the video as well and subscribe to our channel so augustus do you want to take the first question or how do we continue i from just here? wanted to inform again oh. that uh, we created a playlist so uh with chris we will do more videos in the future i'm surprised we have just five videos including this today's or oh, it's yeah it's maybe included already yeah i think so, we already have one or two in the uh in the pipeline yeah, that yeah we've talked cool. about all right so the first question is brrr, who is the winner <laughs> so let's take the very first one which uh, goes back to the beginning of your presentation so which tools are you using for keyword research yeah okay so um so we use inside the titan network where i am a mentor for the seven and eight figure sellers we use a a proprietary tool in there that's called Mufasa that does reverse ASIN analysis. And it also does like relevancy analysis and a whole bunch of other things. Um, and in, uh, in Sophie, depending on whether the brand is part of Titan or not, we will use Helium 10 um, or Mufasa. <laughs> so those are the two top ones that we use. Um, yeah, Helium 10 is absolutely great. Also have used AMZ Scout before. I think they have a, a high quality tool that's continuously updated. Um, but yeah, so the, the main ones that we use are, are Helium 10 and FASA. And yeah, for those of you that are interested in joining some kind of mastermind or something like that, you could shoot me a, shoot me a chat um, because yeah, it, it, is, it is definitely valuable to be surrounded by people who are on the same path as you. Okay, let's go to the next one. So Paul is asking, what would you consider as enough sales data? That's a really good question. It, it depends on your uh, appetite for risk and how high degree of probability you want that you um, are choosing the right keywords and how fast you want to move. Um, so 
you know, if you've gotten like five to 15 sales from a keyword at a consistent high click through rate and a consistent high conversion, um, that's like the minimum that you'd want to, to have statistically significant data to move a keyword. Um, but obviously ideally you have hundreds or thousands of orders, um, for the, the, the actual really big insights that you're acting on by changing the structure of the listing itself. Um, if you're just graduating keywords, it's okay. If you, you kind of mess that up or you act a little too early, um, you can't act on like one or two or three sales. Even five is like pretty low amount of data. Once you get to like between five and 10 and 15, 20, then that, that's enough data where you know, like, oh, this isn't a fluke. Um, one sale could be a fluke. Two sales could be a fluke. Three sales could even be a fluke. Um, but yeah, so it depends on how fast you want to move and how, how much of a stickler you are for really accurate data. You know, it, this is, this is actually a science. Um, and in science, there's a degree of statistical probability that the data is accurate. It actually gets a P value, is what it's called in experiments. And, um, so yeah, so it's up to you. If, if it's coming down to graduating keywords, you can have a lower threshold. If it's coming down to changing the structure of your listing based on the insights you're getting from PPC, then I would move the threshold up because that's, that's a big deal. Okay. Very good. So let's take another one. So in your slide number one and pull at number four, you mentioned buyer intent. So what did you mean by that? Good question. Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> buyer intent means it's, it's a grouping for the keyword that's wholly separate from volume. So you could separate keyword by volume, like, like in the Omega three example that I had, the keyword Omega three is going to be the highest volume, like 700,000 searches a month or something crazy like that. Um, and then you could have Omega three chewable supplement for dogs, 50 milligram. And that's going to be like a thousand searches a month or maybe even 500 searches a month, but it's super high relevance, right? That's grouping by volume. Grouping by buyer intent is a whole different paradigm of grouping of the keywords where you put keywords together that have a similar uh, purpose. Like for instance, uh, in this omega-3 example, for instance, there are also people searching for dog joint pain. All they know is that their dog has joint pain and they want some kind of something for that. And one of the best things for that is an omega-3 supplement for them or some kind of anti-inflammatory supplement. So then they're going to find the, the product and they're going to buy it. And that is a specific intent. There's going to be dog, jo dog joint pain, dog leg pain, dog nerve pain. You know, that, that would all be grouped into one buyer intent slot so that you could really focus and hone in on the specific search terms related to that buyer intent. Um, whereas just sorting by volume, you're kind of mixing up the buyer intent. So a lot of times there are a couple main buckets that you can categorize as buyer intent. Um, another example is there are a lot of products that are bought by the individual using them and then also bought by someone else for a different user, like products for older people can be like that. A lot of times it's the son or the daughter purchasing products for their older parent. Um, even though the product is for the parent, you're actually selling to a different buyer that's not the end user. And that's a different buyer intent than the, the person who's buying it for themselves. So that's what I mean when I say buyer intent. All right. Uh, we have uh, more questions. So Jeff wants to know, are product placement ads sponsored display ads? Product placement, ad, product placement ads are the ads that show in the, the product listing itself. So they actually, it, there's there are a couple different sections for them. There's products, uh, sponsored products related to this item. And then there's also other products from brand. Um, and those show in there as well. And then I, there, I, I believe there's also another, another different wording for sponsored products related to this product as well and they all show up on the listing. So these are not showing up in search results. These are showing up specifically on the listing. 
Good. Uh, next question is from Michael. In your EBC, where should you place the product carousel? Top, bottom? Oh, good question. It's the very last module on the bottom. That's where you want to put it. Because the rest of the modules on the top, they like tell a story. You want to start with the hero image, then go on to a four panel benefits image, then a four panel features image. Then you're going to do two full banners. Uh, not sorry, the, the benefits and the features are going to be four panels. Uh, one's going to be in images, one's going to be um, actual graphics. Then you're going to go into full uh, banners that either tell the story, tell X factors, tell inclusions, or tell step by step guides. And then the last module is going to be the product carousel module. And um, if you want to see like an actual course on this, it's in the playlist uh, that that Augustus posted. We did a video together on this. That's on YouTube out there. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us which video was it to remind? Is it this one? It should be called EBC A plus content formula. This one probably. Yeah. So. Um... It's it should be the video. most recent one because I think we did a, a couple yeah, of them. So check uh, one of them and you will find uh, something useful. Yeah. All right. Make sure uh, it's good. the most recent one because it changed. Formula changed. Next one is from Joe. Product placement ads on own products. Is PPC correct? Not paper and yeah. mesh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still pay-per-click. All right. You can one see more. the impressions, but you're actually paying. Next short question from Sema. How can we make virtual bundle? Uh, you can make this right in Seller Central. Uh, you, it's it's a feature of Amazon. It's not you don't have to use any third party software for this. Um, I believe there's a guy here. Let me see if I can post this. Um, uh, actually, I wanted to jump in real quick. So actually, uh, tomorrow I will give a presentation myself and I will explain what this tool is and how you can use oh. it. And actually in the VIP video, I will show you a step-by-step -step guide how to actually add it in Seller Central as well. So that's awesome. a good question. <laughs> Could you clarify the relation between impression and click-through rates when choosing keywords from search term report to optimize listing? Yeah. Um, so that's a really good question. So the impressions are the number of times that somebody quote unquote saw, it just means that it was on their screen, one of your ads and the click through rate means they were actually interested enough to click it. So the click through rate, um, is, or the clicks, sorry, the clicks are much more important than the impressions because the clicks tell you that it's relevant traffic. The impressions, all that tells you is the volume of traffic, and it doesn't even tell you that very well because sometimes Amazon, especially in the auto campaigns, will show you'll get a ton of impressions from a keyword that's maybe not even your highest volume or highest relevance keyword. So sometimes it can be kind of random. Uh, you really want to look at clicks. And so the click-through rate is telling you how relevant the product thumbnail is to them. And that's just the product image and the title and any like coupons that you have on there or banners like bestseller or uh, Amazon's choice. That's the higher the click through rate, the higher the relevance on, on just those things. Then the actual CVR, which is the conversion to purchase, that's going to tell you the relevance of the rest of the content of the listing, the A plus content, the secondary images, all the bullet points, the brand story, everything else that you did. So think of CTR as telling you how good you're doing, winning the click with the main image and the title. And think of the CVR as telling you how good you're doing, actually converting those clicks to purchases so that you know what to work on. If you're getting like a low click through rate, but a high conversion, then you just have a, a really bad primary image or a bad title that it's, or it's not just bad, but maybe it's just not high relevance enough. Like it's not speaking to a specific avatar. Whereas if you have a high click through rate, we have a low conversion rate. Um, then, you know, you have, there's something wrong with your content. It's not visual enough. It's not showing human faces. It's not telling a story. It's not showing your ideal customer avatar. And if you don't know what's good and what's bad, First of all, create benchmarks for yourself. So average the non-branded keywords, meaning keywords that don't have your brand name in it, because those are going to be crazy high and that's going to skew your data. Average them 
And now you have some kind of benchmark. You're like, okay, normally my click through rate is like one and a half percent. And now you have something to compare against. So you know if you're getting better or worse. But you can also use uh, Celix has a really cool benchmarking tool that will tell you how other products in your categories are doing with these um, these metrics. So you know if you are good or bad on and where you sit on the spectrum. If you're sitting like you know on the high end of the spectrum and you're better than like 70% of brands, or if you're on the low end of the spectrum and you're only better than like 20% of the brands. So and the Celix benchmarking tool is free. So yeah, uh, yeah it's super I, valuable. I, I, I also wanted to say that we actually have recorded a few videos about the Celex benchmark tool as well. I find it as well very useful, very visual, very easy to understand, right, Chris? It's super, yeah. super useful, very much information in a clear way. So uh, no it matter is. what your like background regarding PPC and stuff, you will definitely understand uh, your metrics really well. So definitely check out those videos as well. Cool. So let's move on to the next question then. Jeff is asking two keywords in Amazon Post Captions uh, index in search. Uh, no, those aren't going to, to contribute to your ranking, um, but they the, 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 but the, you are more concerned with creating the captions that actually create clicks. So don't worry about like keyword optimizing for ranking in the post. You don't really have to worry about that at all. Um, it may have something to do with how Amazon decides where to show the post because they they are they have a completely separate indexing for the way that posts organize themselves and the way that posts work based on the ones that get the most engagement and the keywords in the post. But it doesn't have anything to do with the ranking of your listing. So I would more focus the captions on just getting them to click. You know, they could be weird, interesting, mysterious, thought provoking. You know, that's that's the type of caption that you want. And you know what? The other thing is I want to harp on this, that it's more about volume than it is. I don't want to say it's more about volume than quality because you don't want the post to look bad or you don't want them to like sound bad. But it is more important to have a lot of them because it gives you more of a chance of showing up different places. And that's the that's the strategy that we've seen sellers have success with is posting them just every day, just posting like just posting a lot of just continuously posting them again and again and again. That's uh, that's where you're going to see the big the biggest success with posts. You can download like example company captions and then just like quickly customize them to you. Like you could literally do this in an hour. You could crank out like 60 or 90 in an hour just by downloading a bunch of company captions that and then just deleting the ones that are not relevant, quickly changing the ones that are relevant, and you can get, boom, 60, 90 captions, you know, real fast. Which ads and how do you start to launch phase? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is a, so I have a whole presentation on this. Um, so try to take, a, it, take it together with a few sentences. I, I'll, I'll do it as quickly as possible. So during the launch phase, the thing that brands get wrong is they try to create as many different ad types as possible. In this case, actually less is more. The main work that you're doing for the launch phase for PPC isn't actually the PPC itself. It's the amount of effort you put into the keyword research before you start PPC. So most of the campaigns that you're creating during the launch phase are ranking campaigns, meaning they're campaigns that are for the sole purpose of ranking. And you're gonna do one, and they're sponsored search ads sponsored search. You're not going to mess around with sponsored brand ads, not too much, unless you have a really good video or something like that. That's, that can be, you're not going to mess around even too much with product placement ads. You can do a couple that are super high relevance, but most of it, you're going to to focus on sponsored search and you're going to set up separate campaigns for each of the primary high relevance, high volume keywords you want to rank for. And you're going to set up separate campaigns that bundle together search terms that are in the same, uh, same group of search volume or in the same buyer intent group and focus on measuring the ranking result you get versus the amount that you spent net on those campaigns. That's what you really are trying to measure. So it's, and it, and the tacos is the number one, the number one metric, but the, the key here that I'll just repeat, and then I'm done for this question, Lisette, and you can uh, move on to the next one is um, set up dedicated campaigns 
or keywords that you really want to rank for. You don't have to do a separate one for all 500 keywords if you have a whole gigantic amount of long tail keywords, but for the primary ones that you want to rank for that are high relevance, high traffic, set up dedicated campaigns for those so that you can dial them in and you really want to drive search. You're not trying to get profitable on these campaigns. They're just for the purposes of driving ranking. And if you do it right, you can do it really, really well. You can rank for keywords very quickly. So we have, uh, I think, another five plus questions. So let's uh, test if Chris knows how to, Chris has a skill to answer questions very fast. So the first question okay. is another question. Do you guys utilize any ad softwares in your agency or all manual PPC management? Yes, we use uh, our own internal software uh, on the back end that we use to organize and, and analyze keywords. So it's not front facing. You don't see the software, but we, we use it on the back end. Oh, perfect. Very quick, quick answer. Sahari again wants to know, what are your thoughts on where PPC is headed? More social commerce, more video? Thoughts on Q3, 4, 2023? In three words. <laughs> three words. <laughs> <laughs> to be fast. Way okay. more spend. No, yeah, um, yeah I'll say I think uh, PPC is becoming more and more a tool for ranking and less a tool for driving direct profit and sales. The costs are going up. I think a lot of that has to do with aggregators spending a lot more money to increase the revenue in their portfolio companies without having too much of an eye on profit. Um, however, it opens up an opportunity for those who are really good at setting up campaigns that are dedicated towards seeing PPC as a larger part of the whole business picture, like I went into in this presentation. So it's actually a lot easier to rank using PPC now than it was last year. I don't even know exactly why that is. It might have something to do with the fact that Amazon like removed rebates and super URLs and started cracking down on that. But if you do it right, and you're one of the few sellers that understands how to use PPC as a ranking tool and focus on tacos, not ACOS, and focus on PPC as part of the whole business, that you're actually going to do way better this year than you've ever done before. Great. So when we started this game of uh, speed answering, we had uh, maybe six questions left. We are doing a bad job because we still have six questions left. So what? next question. They're increasing. They're like coming to the light. How do you A, B test uh, photos and your material? Do you use uh, PicFu? We do it manually. We don't use PicFu. PicFu is cool. Uh, I, I think PicFu is great um, for product research. Uh, because then you can see when you're first setting up the listing, like what customers are responding to better, but we do it manually. That's how we do it. We track every single the data every single day during the beginning of a launch and we will manually see the effects of every change we log. And the, tracking manually through a daily tracker allows you to not just A-B test videos, but everything. Any change that you make, you just log it in your daily tracker and then you can always go back and see what effect it had. Uh, next one, what is the best way to get sales on sales data on PPC besides the campaign manager? Just a search term report. Do you have any tools to show it more of a user-friendly view? Good question. Yeah, the search term report and the keyword report, there's a bunch of different reports that you can use to get data. Uh, it's pretty easy to sort the data just in Google Sheets or Excel. So that is a good place. I wouldn't knock it. Uh, it's definitely a good place to get data. But there are plenty of softwares that organize the data for you and organize uh, keywords for you. You know, Celex has their own PPC tool. There's Prestizon, there's Tika Metrics, there's PackView, there's uh, Quartile if you want to go the black box route. There are a lot of softwares that do it, but a lot of them are, I would say, too expensive for you to use just as a data gathering tool. The search term reports are pretty easy to process. So if you're just handling your own account, you're not holding, handling tons of accounts like us, which is why we need our own software, um, then you can do it just by analyzing the, the, the reports. There's a number of different reports you can download. Um, they all have different purposes. Perfect. So we have a few more questions. Uh, next one is from Sir. If you want to be profitable, ASAP during launch, is it better to focus on 20% of keyword generating 80% revenue 
all focus on 80%, keyword generating 20% revenue. Yeah, you would definitely focus on the former, the 20% of the keywords generating the majority of the revenue and the profit. Um, the thing that I'll say though, is that if you try to get profitable too early in a launch, you shoot yourself in the foot for the life of the campaign, the life of the product, because you didn't do enough work cementing your ranking position during the launch phase, which is your should be your primary uh, focus. So if you're too hyper-focused on, on getting profitable, you're not focusing enough on ranking. And that will hurt you because you won't stick the ranking. You won't be running that feedback back loop that I mentioned before, where you're getting you're better at sticking the ranking by getting a higher relevance listing and higher relevance traffic and that reinforcing feedback loop. When you focus on profit and ACoS, you stop that feedback loop. It stops. I actually have an infographic that I drew myself on this. Um, I'll send it to you guys if any of you guys need it, if you, if you message me. But it's not pretty, but it, it's, it's super valuable. It shows the different phases where like there's the launch phase where you're like quickly expanding, getting as much market share as you can. And then once you are not losing money anymore, you're break even, there's an expansion phase where you're just getting more market share while starting to pull money out of the product. And then once you're at that phase and you've gained as much of the market as you can without going back into the negative, then there's a harvesting phase where you're just staying where you are and pulling money out of the product and trying to profit 20 to 30% net. Those are the three major phases. And I have a whole science on how to like handle PBC campaigns differently in each phase. Um, I have it all in the infographic. I'll send it to you guys if you want it. Just shoot me a message. Uh, yes. Actually, we have some requests from Zahari. Can you verbally... Uh, actually, I will also have a request. So first request is, can you verbally commit to agree to start uh, your own YouTube channel? But before you do that, can you verbally agree to uh, deliver... Uh, much more content on our channel yes i can definitely commit to that augustus and perfect sorry. so then I you would, don't uh, need to, uh, to commit to verbally to zahari <laughs> he sniped you zahari <laughs> um yeah i love youtube i actually i love video content and i love augustus too so like it's i think this is working out great so far um we also do and no a, and no um, comments about me Although we have recorded oh, Lizette, this together. Oh, <laughs> Lizette is actually the one who spends the most time with me when we are on YouTube because it's just really Yeah, really yeah we always have a good time and I always We do have enjoy. a good time. We do, yeah. don't we? Yeah, and we I do. enjoy that's really true. Chris true. content as well. So yeah, the videos are awesome. All, All right, right, so few more. few more, yeah, let's go. So Tony is asking, do you use bidding placements? And if so, what percent do you suggest with top of search? Yeah, it depends. So our top of search adjustment can be 100%, 200%, 600%. Um, we try to get most of our, our placements as top of search because of the fact that it just guarantees you that you're getting like a high relevance click from someone who's looking to solve a problem. Um, rest of search is fine too, as long as it's search. That's all that matters. Like if you're spending too much of your ad dollars on uh, product display ads or the, or product placement ads or uh, sponsored display ads, you know, those are not going to contribute to your ranking as much. Um, so top of search and rest of search, you know, they both contribute to ranking. Um, it seems like top of search contributes more. So we do have a, a pretty high top of search bid adjuster when we are focusing on a, on a keyword that we know we really want to rank for just because it's, it's just a more sure shot way to know that you're getting that click for uh, a high buyer intent search. Okay, very good. So almost the last one, exact match or broad match in your single keyword campaigns and or do you use up, down bid, up only or down only on bid? Uh, that would be exact match for the single keyword campaigns and either uh, a fixed bid or a down only bid. All right. And the last question we have is, uh, what number do you think is good in, uh, sorry, I don't know these abbreviations very well. Yeah. Uh, conver the, conversion and click through rate in PPC keywords. Conversion. Yeah. Good. Lisette. Yeah. This is a good question, Tony. Um, this is a very difficult to answer because it, it varies dramatically from category to category. But the main thing to keep in mind is that 
uh, PPC conversion is not listing conversion. Those are two very, very different numbers. Your PPC conversion rate is going to always be much lower than your, well, almost all the time. The vast majority of the time, your PPC conversion rate is going to be lower than your total listing conversion rate or your unit session percentage. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't get, don't feel down if you have a, a low PP, a low PPC conversion rate or what you perceive as a low PPC conversion rate because it's so much lower than what you consider good conversion for uh, your actual listing for the unit session percentage because uh, it can still be considered good. So yeah, I would use the benchmarker tool uh, to see what's a good click-through rate and what's a good conversion rate. The click-through rate could be anything between half a percent to 5%. I mean, it could be like 60% if it's branded search terms, for instance. Um, it varies so dramatically. But you can have like a good keyword that has a click-through rate of like 1.5% that you like really focus on because it's got a lot of traffic and that's, you know, significant amount of clicks. Um, Whereas you're not going to really focus on these branded keywords where you're getting a 60% click through rate because they're not going to be high search volume. And those are people that were searching for you anyway. So you know, it's, it's not worth your time or attention. I would, I would go to the Celix tool and try to try to use the benchmarker to find out for your specific category, what's considered good or what the average is. All right. Um, so, Chris mentioned Selix Benchmarker tool. If you search our videos inside our YouTube channel, you will find a couple of videos about Benchmarker tool. And um, if you don't find, uh, please write to us. So we can uh, help you with the link directly. So write to us always at team at orangeclick.com. Also, if you enjoyed this session, uh, don't forget to uh, click like, so subscribe, <laughs> uh, whatever you see at the bottom. And... Uh, Thank you very much, Chris. One more time. How do you help or you don't help Amazon sellers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to help Amazon sellers. Um, yeah, so we are traffic and conversion. Uh, so we manage PPC for brands and we do it, you know, using all the strategies that I just went through um, during this presentation. And we, you get a dedicated PPC manager. You meet with your PPC manager on a regular basis. You get dedicated reports. Um, basically, all you need to do is align on the goals for the brand, and we handle everything PPC. And we don't consider it a silo. We consider it part of the larger business. Um, I would consider our PPC management best in class. Um, and I have a huge amount of respect. All of our PPC managers are people I would work for, and they work for me. So. You know, I'm, I'm honored to, to work with great guys like that. So that's what we do on the traffic side, um, managing Amazon advertising. On the conversion side, we create conversion-focused content. So that's copy, that's enhanced brand content, A-plus content, that's infographics and secondary images, that's even primary images and full photo sets from scratch. Um, it even includes video. It's basically whatever the brand needs most in order to uh, convert better. So Amazing. that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we're at a point where, you know, we, we do it for a lot of the top masterminds, like I mentioned in the beginning of the, of the call. And we probably at some point will stop doing it for other brands and just do it for our own brands. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for now, we're, we're still serving other brands that just want to perform better and they want to accelerate their success. And you will find the link to Sophie Society, the Chris company and agency below in the description. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot of people. And you can email. You can email too if that's easier for you guys. Just hello mm -hmm. at sophiesociety.com if, if you need one of the things or the deck or something like that. Just yeah. feel free to hit me up. People are saying thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, wonderful presentation. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Chris. And. Uh, Goodbye. Good luck in your business. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, bye Lisette. And now I would like to invite you to watch other video with Chris, where he explains how you can get big money by using high converting storefronts, how to use it and uh, how you can use it for your brand. <laughs>